Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to my topic. Uh, in this session, I will uh, share some experience of discovering flash zero day exploits in the wild. And uh, we, I also will introduce a little tool how to identify flash zero day exploit. This is my uh, agenda. First, who am I? I am research of China Micro Zero Day Discover team, and I'm also a NTAPT engine developer. I'm interested in discovering vulnerabilities and writing exploits. Currently, I focus on Flash, Android system, and OS X kernel. In this year, I have discovered several Flash Zero Day exploits in the wild, and also have reported dozens of Android system bugs to Google. And I'm, I'm also doing some research on OS X kernel now. Uh, let me introduce the background of this topic. We know that Oracle introduced click to play to Java applet, and the browser vendors introduced several UAF mitigations. So flash player exploits boomed in uh, 2015. So I can call 2015 is flash year. We can see that zero day attack targets are mostly flash player in 2005, 2015. It begins with uh, CVE 2015 0310 and doesn't end yet. So in this situation, uh, after Microsoft introduced isolated heap and uh, memory protector in late 2014, I guessed that uh, Flash Player will be the most popular target in 2015. So I decided to do something to catch Flash Player zero day attacks in 2015. Uh, to achieve this goal, there are there were two problems need to be solved. The first problem is how to get effective samples in the wild. I need to find uh, some sourcing channels can provide effective samples in the wild. And the second problem is uh, how to identify zero-day export from these samples because the number of these samples may be very large. You need a tool or you need an automation process. So I will uh, introduce uh, some sample channels I use. The first sourcing channel is products feedback. There are a large number of SWF samples from products or engines detection feedback. And uh, uh, there, are, there are new come, uh, new new feedback come every day. These samples are effective because they, are, they have been filtered by uh, products or engines detection, uh, detection rules. So they are effective. The second sourcing channel is the URL crawl. Usually, there are several exploits integrated in one URL. Uh, the, server, the server side decide, decide to check which exploit depends on software versions installed in victim systems. For example, if user's Java version is low, the server side will check a Java exploit, but not IE exploit or Flash exploit. So if you catch an old Java CVE or an old IE CVE detection URL, you can crawl the URL in an up-to-date system. It may trigger flash zero-day exploit. So uh, you, you can catch this kind of URL and crawl them. The third sourcing channel is uh, where total intelligence. There are Many SWF samples can be downloaded from various source intelligence uh, using query statements. Results show that zero-day sample may be submitted to 
where Soto be, before it was before it was disclosed to public. Attackers may some submit their their day POC to where to, to check the AV detection. The fourth sourcing channel is URL pattern. Uh, export kit or campaign URLs may have some pattern. If you check one kind of uh, export kit or campaign, you may find the pattern of the URLs. And so you can catch this kind of URL and uh, with them to detect. I got uh, uh, many samples and URLs from about sourcing channels. So I need a tool to help me identify zero day from this kind of samples. Mm. This tool uh, must have a low force alert because the the number is large. So if the force alert is is high, this is difficult to identify. And uh, this tool must have log to rec record record exploit event when detected, and it must have high performance. So I write a little tool to help me identify. I I call it advanced flash exploit detector. Uh, AFED. FED is an IEBO tool written by C++. It hooks flash OCX in IE process to detect. It also hooks IE standard events to get current URLM. And it uh, can write detections and behaviors to log file. Using AFED, I, I can make a simple automation process. You just uh, register FED, and every time load a URL in IE, FED will hook uh, Flash O6 to detect. It will write detection uh, and uh, behaviors to log file. When you finish all URLs, you can pass the log file with uh, your self-defined rules to output results. So how to implement FED? We know that Adobe introduced vector object mitigation in July with the help of Google Project Zero. Before the vector object mitigation introduced, all flash exports use corrupted vector object to export. This is because corrupt one vector object is very easy and it can achieve arbitrary read and write using the corrupt, corrupted vector object. This is the typical export flow before mitigation. You can see that uh, the first stop, the first step is to allocate several vectors and then trick the vulnerabilities to corrupt one vector object. And then you can find the corrupted vector object. Use this object, you can read and write the process memory and you can uh, do, do anything you want. You can build RP and uh, execute shell code and the payload. So based on uh, this uh, exploit flow, I can uh, did deduce this ideally uh, detection flow. Uh, ideally, after uh, the vulnerability has been triggered, we can check the worked object. If there is a huge length, huge length worked object, we can see that uh, it is an exploit and log it. Uh, so I need a, a chance or a checkpoint to check the vector length. So I hook a GIT point of AVM2. Uh, we know that almost each S3 method will be GIT before it be called first time. So after I hook the GIT point, uh, we have chance to check vector object, object length. So practically, pra practically, it is like this. Before each step, it will hit the GIT hook function. And in this function, we can check vector object length. Uh, I hook the key function of GIT uh, this is the basic execute manager verify function. It can be found 
in the AVM Plus open source project on GitHub. In this function, we can get AS3 method name from the method info structure. And we, we can also get the emitted native code address. So uh, how to check the vector, vector object length? Uh, I hooked the vector creating. There is a template function named the new vector in ABM plus project, um, which create uh, kinds of vector objects because there are uh, four types of vector objects in ABM2. So there are four instances in Flash binary. Uh, after hooked the vector creating, you can get the vector object address. So you can use this formula to get the vector length easily. So finally, the detection flow before mitigation is like this. Uh, in the vector located steps, I can save the vector object address. And in the GIT hook functions, I can use the saved vector objects to check the vector length. Uh, this is perfect uh, before mitigation, but uh, after uh, mitigation introduced, uh, since ch since changed, uh, exploit can't use vector object to exploit. They use other objects. For example, the latest flash zero day uh, in the world is CVE two thousand fifty uh, seven six four five. This exploit used battery based object. By overwriting battery length, it can achieve arbitrary read and write. Uh, so I need to uh, improve AFED a little. Uh, by check the GIT native code, I, I found that the GIT native code prologues are almost like this. So I can hook the first nine bytes to record each S3 method call. And I have mentioned that uh, FED can get S3 method name and uh, GIT native code address by hooking the uh, verified GIT function. So I can um, trace the, uh, each S3 method call, so I can print uh, the chase to the log file uh, like this. So I so I call this is the sample's behaviors because uh, each function, each uh, base object function, uh, we can record the the behaviors. So I can add heuristic rules based on the behaviors. Uh, for example, if a ex exploit use battery heap three. Uh, FED will print lots of core flash UTS battery to the log file because this is the uh, constructor. So when passing the log file, I can add a rule to detect the uh, battery heap three. Other heuristic rules can be added by analysis uh, from recent exploits or your experience. Uh, for example, uh, recently exploits also use bitmap data heap spray. So you can uh, add a rule to match call uh, bitmap data constructor to detect. Uh, okay, uh, I have forgot one thing. Uh, we need to hook the flash OCX loading. Uh, it is like a Windy Box module load event. In, uh, so I hook the com function call get class object function in URM. In this function, uh, in this function, I can use is require class ID to identify uh, flash 
uh, OS, OCX is being loaded or not. Okay, uh, all things are be done. So we can use this uh, improved uh, FED to check if there is a is a zero exploit. Okay, this is my reference. Uh, inside ABM uh, from Hyphae and uh, the uh, Google Project Zero block about the mitigations. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Uh, because this, this topic uh, is hard to do de demo, so there is no, no demo for this topic. But uh, if there is a, a, any questions, I can answer. Okay. Uh, as you pointed out, when you were visiting landing pages, okay. there are cases where you might not even reach the flush. Oh, yes, yeah, 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 you're right. So how, how does it affect your um, uh, in the uh, In the beginning, I craft the landing page because uh, export, export kit or campaign URLs I use uh, same kind of uh, flash uh, argu arguments. So I can craft uh, the argument from late, from before export. So this can reach to the export code. But, uh, uh, so you, you, you the page. Yeah, yeah, I craft uh, uh, HTML to load. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because you 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 need to chase, yeah, ch choose one kind of export kit or one kind of companion, so you can know the the style, the style. Yeah, yes. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.